Last time on Total Drama Random Island, teams were tasked with cooking a three-course meal with the help of their hand-picked head chef. Kitty quit the challenge early, Taylor was sick as spud thinking she was fake, and Dwayne and Pete just genuinely got along for killer bass. DJ was mentally destroyed after voting out so many of Millie's friends, but Justin got his head back into the game. Owen was a real hassle in the kitchen. Elodie and B finally tied the knot, and despite Ella's attempts, Millie wouldn't join the alliance. At Illumination, Spud bringing back an artifact from Boney Island was the straw that broke the camel's back for Spud. Jock tells Sammy that this isn't good, they are tied now in numbers. Without majority, they could be picked off one by one. Taylor asks Jock and Sammy if they've ever seen these types of shows before. Usually when they get to around half of the cast left, the teams merge into one. Jock says that's great news, they just have to last till then. He's sure they could survive at least one more elimination. Dwayne tells Pete that he's gonna confront Kitty, and no matter what she does to him, he will make sure she knows she is cared about. Pete says that he's a brave man. Dwayne goes to the cabin and says to listen here. He knows Kitty is hurting, but he cares about her, and Duncan wouldn't want to see her moving around like this. So she needs to get up and... Kitty tells him to cool it. After last challenge, she realized that she'd be eliminated if she kept being like that, so she's not sad anymore. Dwayne says, oh, good. Kitty tells him to cheer up. Without him, she would have quit already. Elodie and B are enjoying each other's company while DJ and Ella watch them, and DJ says he can't do it. To break up a love like that would be cruel. Ella says that this game is cruel. She doesn't want to hurt anyone either, but they have to think about the positives here. Like, her and Justin will remain if they vote one of them out instead. Owen arrives and asks what they're looking at before seeing Elodie and B. Owen says that they've been really close after dating each other. Closer than usual, he means. They'd be totally heartbroken if they were split up. DJ says that that is not helping. Owen asks in confessional how he was supposed to know that DJ was having issues voting people out. It's a part of the game. Millie goes to Justin and tells him that she's ready to join him. Justin says that it took her long enough. But since Merge will be here soon, he could really use her. Millie asks what Merge is and Justin asks if she actually came here to play or just to write a book on her experiences here. Both options are pretty smart, admittedly. Millie says that of course it's a book on her experiences here. It wouldn't be anything else. Justin says alright then. Merge is when the teams dissolve and teams just play for individual immunity. Millie asks if that happens in other shows and Justin says it's almost a universal practice. His agents told him everything he needed to know before he went on. Also told him about idols, but he wasn't getting his hands dirty finding one. Millie says fine, who will they be voting for? Justin says that if they lose, they will get rid of one of the lovers. Millie in confessional says that that's really mean, but she needs to continue her research on people of today. She already has a lot on Justin. Narcissist Artistic, evil, has no regard for others' feelings, he's like a perfect villain. Chris welcomes the teams to their next challenge. There is a lot of tension going on between you all. As a result, you will all have to go through three major challenges. Two members from each team will be paired up to compete. Usually, we would let you all pick who you'd like to be with, but this time, the producers and I think it would be more fun if I got to choose for you. You will have to trust your teammate with your life. Taylor in Confessional says, trust someone here with my life? Yeah, I'd rather die now. At the first challenge, Chris says that one team member will be responsible with rock climbing while the other person must hold them up. Katie and Sammy will be the pair for the killer bass, while Justin and Beer will be the pair for the screaming gophers. Sammy tells Kitty that they don't need to make a big deal out of this, she will. Kitty interrupts her and says that she will be climbing, so Sammy will have to carry her own weight for once in a challenge. Sammy in Confessional says that Kitty is getting on her last nerve. Justin says that he will carry B since climbing puts him at too much of a risk for his modeling job if he falls. Now there are a few surprises you'll have to worry about, but I'm sure you'll get it as you go. The round starts and Justin says that B could really use a diet plan. Kitty hits an explosion and Sammy is able to hold her up. Kitty tells her thanks for not letting her fall and Sammy tells her to just regain her balance again. Chris sprays Sammy with habanero sauce and Kitty asks if Sammy's alright and Sammy says she's fine. Just win the challenge for them, she can last through the searing pain at least long enough for them to win. Chris sprays Justin and he says that it burns. He needs a wet towel stab before it ruins his 2020 vision or his skin. Ella hands a towel to him and Justin thanks her, letting go of the rope and B falls. Kitty climbs to the top and Chris says that killer bass have won round one. 
Chris welcomes Dwayne and Taylor for Killer Bass and Ella and Melly for round two. One member will have to prepare Fugu Sashimi out of a puffer fish. If it's not prepared right, well, things won't go that well for you, but if you can prepare it correctly, your team will win a point. Dwayne asks how good Taylor is at cooking, and Taylor says that she won the Little Tykes cooking competition three years in a row. This will be easy. Melly says that she trusts Ella can do this, and Ella says that she will do what she can. Melly takes a bite of Ella's and says that it's really Really good, she's actually really talented. Dwayne says that that instills some confidence in him before taking a bite of Taylor's sashimi and having immediate effects from it. Dwayne is immediately helped by Chef. The next part will have you shooting an arrow off of someone's head with apples. By the way, Dwayne is onto the challenge for the foreseeable future. Kitty says that she hopes he's okay, and Chris says that he'll be fine physically, just not mentally. Pete says to let him do this, he's a great shot. Owen says that he's really good at eating apples, he can do this. Elodie says it's not about eating the apples, and Chris says that it should be challenging enough for her to get it off Owen's head then. Jock will be getting shot along with Owen, and Pete and Elodie will be the shooters. They both get ready and Pete begins shooting wildly, hitting Jock all over. Elodie tells Owen to yell where it hit him, and she shoots one and Owen begins eating the apple. Elodie knows by the silence what happened, and she positions it once more. Jock continues being assaulted by apples, and when Elodie shoots her second shot, it falls off. Chris says that the Screaming Gophers win round two. Pete says in confessional that he has served the ball in tennis so many times he'd assumed that skill would translate a bit. Turns out he was way off. Elodie says in confessional that it was simple mathematics. Most people would just shoot blindly, but if you calculate your shot better, it would be easy to figure out where the arrow is. Jockey confessional says that old Colner has another thing coming if he thinks he can hit him like that and get away with it. Chris welcomes them to their next challenge. This is the blindfolded trapeze. One team member will be responsible for telling the other to jump off a platform into their loving arms and bring them to safety. If you mess up, you will fall into a pond of jellyfish. For Killer Bass, Sammy and Taylor will go while DJ and B will go for screaming gophers. DJ tells Justin to watch a bunny and Justin says he will watch it as if it was one of his kids, like one of the kids he cares about. That's important to state in the entertainment business. DJ is standing up and he asks when to jump and B realizes he can't exactly say anything and Justin asks what's wrong with him and Elodie says he's not exactly good at speaking. Justin says that's great, he was shy until he was 4 years old, maybe he should grow up a bit. B is angered by that and Justin says okay, okay, I'm sorry, that was insensitive, alright, I'll tell you when to jump DJ. Chris tells him that if he does that, their team will forfeit. DJ says there's no way he's doing this, and Chris says that in that case the killer bass can swoop in to take the point. Taylor says that there's no way she's jumping, and Sammy says that she needs to do it otherwise they will lose. Taylor says that she's gonna intentionally have her fall in the water. Sammy asks why she would ever do that, and Taylor says that it's because she bullied her. Sammy says that they've been over this, it was Amy's fault, not hers. Taylor says that she was lying, and Sammy asks what she means, and Taylor says that she did it for fun, she admits it, she bullied Sammy because it was fun to do and not because Amy made her do it. Millie says wow before writing in her notebook some more, and Justin says that he thought he was the insensitive one around here. LED says that he still is, but at least he didn't lie about it. Justin says fair point. Taylor asks for Sammy's response, and Jock tells her not to do anything brash now. Sammy tells him to stop talking, she's thinking. She tells Taylor to jump, and Taylor says she trusts her as she jumps off the platform and Sammy catches her. Chris says that the killer bass have scored another point, and we're going to the tiebreaker round. Taylor tells her thanks, but Sammy says that she's on thin ice from now on, and she's not kidding about it either. Taylor in confessional says that something about the fear of falling into the jellyfish pond in her tone, it really stuck with me. She was giving off mad Amy vibes, I ain't messing with her. Sammy in confessional says it was only until the last moment that I decided to catch her. Chris tells them that the tiebreaker will be a blind toboggan race. One teammate will steer blindfolded while the others gives directions. For Killer Bass, it'll be Pete and Jock. On Screaming Gophers, it'll be Elodie and B. Jock says that he will be blindfolded. He's seen how bad Pete is with a blindfold on. Elodie says that they've got this. As the challenge begins, Jock smiles and in confessional he says that nobody will miss Pete. He may as well throw the challenge. 
Elodie and B are a perfect team, dodging all the traps as Pete knocks into several objects, asking why this route is so bumpy, and Jock says that it's better than the alternative, trust me. Elodie shouts that they're gonna win until they suddenly hear an explosion from behind them. DJ says that that's not good, and right before Elodie and B make it to the finish line, Jock and Pete land. Chris says that Killer Bass are the winners. Dwayne comes out still in a daze, and Kitty asks if he'll be okay, and Jeff says he'll probably be fine in 24 hours. At the elimination ceremony, Chris asks, who wants a treat? A tasty goodie that represents exemption, security, peace of mind. Millie tells him to get on with it. Chris says, and if you don't get a marshmallow, you have to walk to the Dakashi and board the boat of losers, and you can never come back. Ever. Let's see, one for Owen, one for Ella, one for Millie. He throws them their marshmallows. Elodie, Justin, well done. Looks like we only have one left. DJ and B, the final marshmallow. Millie tells him to hurry it up and Chris says, don't rush me. The audience eats up this kind of dramatic conclusion. DJ. Elodie says that this can't be and Justin says to believe it, B sucked today. Chris says that the rest of you are safe. For now. B, boat of losers for you. Before B leaves, Elodie tells him that she will do her best to win for them both, and B gives a finger gun as he's taken away. Taylor is taking a shower, and Sammy goes to the piping system and changes it so that the sewage would be put into the showers, and Taylor screams as a result. In confessional, Sammy says that she's not going to be pushed around anymore. She's not a copy of Amy. She's the upgrade. That's why she came out 17 minutes after Amy. And that's that for episode 10 of Total Drama Random Island. What did you think? Question of the week. With two episodes before Merge, which two characters do you think won't make it? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll see you all next time on Total Drama Random Island.